everyone. Welcome to another Meet the 818 interview. Today we have Tina Codinha, um, master chocolatier and owner of Codinha Top Chocolates. Hi, Tina. Ooh, hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, by way of history, a bit of history, um, we actually, I, I actually featured you back in October um, mm -hmm. for Filipino American History Month. Um, and then from there, you've been doing so much with your business. I mean, first off, the chocolates are excellent. Like, if you haven't tried, it's so good. <laughs> um, you know, so I wanted to do a second go around and kind of just dig deeper into the story of how everything came about. So here we are. Um, right? So tell us about your story. What inspired you to become a chocolatier? How did you start? Yeah, so I um, have kind of a, I was in college and I was typical Asian family en route to become a doctor. And um, I didn't really like that very much when I got to college. And I didn't know what else I wanted to do. I had no interests otherwise. And um, I attended a career fair at my college and the lead speaker was a guy who actually graduated bioengineering Nice. For 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then turned chocolatier. Um, wow. So when I heard that, I was, it, it kind of like lit a light bulb. And I, I didn't even know that one could become a chocolatier as a profession. And I kind of took like a three month hiatus from everyone. I was freaking out. I was like, I need to figure out what I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And I just literally asked myself, Tina, what makes you happy? You know, yeah. go do that. And the answer was chocolate. And from there, I applied to the culinary school in San Diego. From there, I just sought out to work under all the best chocolatiers I could. And that was it. Yeah. For me, once I turned on to chocolate, I loved it. I fell in love with it right away. Uh, and I just knew I'm like, this is this is it. This is what I meant to do. So oh my gosh, that's so crazy. I mean, from doctor to chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely different. <laughs> completely different. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um have you ran into any, mem um, during your course of studying, being a chocolatier and all that, mm -hmm. um, I know we talked about your your little run-in in New York with uh, Jacques Torres. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, he was a start, yeah. Yeah, so that was that was a fun story, um, only because my daughter's a big fan, so, <laughs> you know, um, tell us about that. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, when I was graduating from culinary school, you know, culinary school is kind of like a curveball to my parents. They're like, what the heck is our daughter doing, you know? And I felt kind of this pressure when graduation was coming up, and I just knew, I'm like, I need to become a chocolatier, and I don't know how I'm going to do that. And there weren't really chocolate jobs around in San Diego, but I knew that the East Coast had a lot of chocolate shops, and so it was my 24th birthday, so being from LA, I'm like, it's my Kobe birthday. I'm going to go all out with the bang. I'm going to New York. I'm going to all the chocolate shops. So I went to New York and a family friend of mine who was living there brought me to all these chocolate shops. And the last stop was Jacques Therese. And I actually didn't know who he was at the time. And then, of course, when I looked him up, I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, this is a master chocolatier, master pastry chef, MOF, like huge reputation in, the, in our industry. Um, so I just walked in and I asked if I could meet him. He wasn't there. I came back the next day. I asked the same thing. And when he came behind the counter, I just literally said, uh, hi, Chef Jacques. You don't know me. My name is Tina, but I want to know how do you become a successful chocolatier? And he took a good five, 10 minutes, sat down with me and basically told me you need to seek out to work from the best. You need to have a five-year plan and, you know, follow it. And then he asked me, well, where do you live? And I said, uh, I live in California. He said, too bad. He's like, if you lived in New York, maybe I could help you out. And I was just so hyped up on, I think, I was just so impressed by everything about like all the chocolate shops in New York. And I was really looking for something to, I had this fire, but nothing was feeding it. And he gave me his business card with his phone number. And he said, oh, if you need anything, call me. So as soon as I got that card, it just, hello, I am moving to New York. You know, that, that triggered like, are you kidding me? Chef Jacques just gave me his personal number. I am moving to New York. So I flew back to LA and I told my parents uh, the whole story. I said, I think I'm moving to New York. And they're like, you're crazy. Like, what are you doing? They're like, you're not moving to New York. 
do you have a job? Did he offer you a job? I'm like, no, but he gave me his card. He gave me his card, you know? I, and of course, um, I called the number, nothing happened. I emailed, he said, oh, you need to be in touch with a pastry chef, nothing happened. I emailed, I called, I emailed, I called, and I was like, ah. So I um, I talked to uh, Chef B, who was my very first chocolate mentor. He unfortunately passed away last year from cancer, but um, I went to Chef B and I was like, Chef B, I was like, I met Jacques Therese. I made a chocolate connection and now nothing. Like, help me out, Chef B, what am I supposed to do? And Chef B looked at me, he's like, how old are you? 23, 24? It's like, you're not married, you don't have kids. He's like, Tina, he's like, just go there and show up. He's like, you think they're going to take you seriously that you're this girl in California applying for a job when there's all these other applicants in New York? He's like, no. He's like, literally go there with your tools in your hand. Say, hey, Chef Jacques, I'm here. You know, and I just thought, wow, that is so gutsy and ballsy that that might actually work. And so I called the number again as a secretary once more. I said, hi, my name is Tina Villar. I was Villar at the time. I said, I've been calling you for two weeks now. <laughs> Please tell <laughs> Chef Jacques I'm moving to New York if that changes anything. And then they called me two hours back and they said, oh, they want to meet with you. And then from there, um, of course, they didn't have a job opening. So I was like, that's great. I just moved here. I have no job. But they offered me an internship. So I kind of paid my dues and I worked for free in New York, um, sleeping on my friend's couch uh, for a good month. And then they hired me. And then that was my start. Oh, my so, gosh. That, yeah. That's an awesome story. <laughs> I have chills. I'm just like, that is like so gutsy and just like such a go for it attitude, man. <laughs> yeah. There was no going back. Like I said, like my parents were like, you abandoned everything that like you were prepped up to be, you know? So it's kind of, I, I feel like chocolate for me has always been such a strong um it's just something I connect with so strongly. It's finally something that I found that really brought me so much joy. And I don't think growing up, I really connected with anything. Like I was always a smart kid in class and I liked being the smart kid in class, but I didn't really actually connect to it, you know, or have something on the back of that other than, okay, I got straight A's, big whoop. Um, so when I started working with chocolate, I was like, wow, this is freaking awesome. It's just it's something unlike anything else. And I feel like anyone who works in the chocolate industry, they feel the exact same way. You can't describe it. If, you, if you're if you in the chocolate industry, you're definitely in it because you freaking love it. So, yeah. I just, yeah, I, I've seen, well, I watch the cooking shows and the baking shows because of mm -hmm. my, just like, I turn to her and I'm just like the art, you know, just the, the process of making chocolate or anything pastry. It's just yeah, so involved and just, it's just magic. <laughs> it's just magic. Yeah. It's just magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So from there, how did you start um, Codinia Chocolate? Was it just a couple years after you moved back and then you- Oh, no, yeah. Um, Codinia Chocolate was like 10 years in the making. Um, so uh, when I graduated culinary school, I always knew one day I wanted to have my own business. I didn't know what business was going to look like. And I felt like I was kind of, I was starting in something that I was completely at the bottom from. So I was used to being like in academics and I was always the best at it. I just studied my butt off. I was always doing well in it. And now I was entering somewhere where I knew nothing. And so that was very intimidating for me. And so I just told myself, I took Chef Jacques' advice. I went out and I sought to learn out from the best. So I wanted to learn in different chocolate businesses and different chocolate chefs who had different types of businesses because I wanted to see, okay, what's it like to work in a massive chocolate factory like Chef Jacques has? What's it like to work in a luxury boutique like his wife had in Beverly Hills? What's it like to work in a chocolate does this wholesale and it works as a chocolate school also? What's it like to work in a big fancy five-star luxury hotel that does showpieces and amenities and like thousands and thousands of chocolates like every week um, just to get my feet wet and see the different sides and see what I connected with the most. Um, and so I always had a side business called The Chocolate Lady actually while I was doing all this work. Um, and then after we, uh, my husband and I, Bruno, after we had a daughter, um, we wanted to move, or I wanted to move back home to LA and be closer to family. And I had taken a pause from chocolate because I was focusing on raising my, my daughter for her first two years. 
And I just had an, an itch, like I, I felt like there needed to be a revamp. There needed to be, like I'd gone through so much already. It wasn't the chocolate lady anymore. And I was married and my husband is a chocolatier also. So I like the way it sounds, Codinia chocolate. And that's how it came about. So it's a family brand, yeah. No, that's awesome. It sounds so classy. Like I, I mean, I've seen your chocolates and I've seen mm. how it's packaged and just, it's it's too pretty to eat. I mean, sometimes <laughs> like literally, we looked at your box. Or me, me and my family looked at your box for like five minutes, going, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <too pretty." laughs> yeah." So lots of thought and everything. Yeah, yeah. No, it was and it was colorful. I think we got the box that had the yuzu chocolate. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the Wonderless box. Yes. Yeah. So good. <laughs> so how did you? How did you come up with your products? Um, I know that it had yuzu. Um, I know you had incorporated some ube in it. I know you had some Ferrero Rocher. So yeah. all your creations, where, where, where does the thought process come from? So with Kudinia chocolate, uh, we wanted, so it was, we started it in COVID, right? We started, we launched it September last year. Um, and it was a business a year, really hardcore thinking, detail by detail. And I wanted it to be um, in every single aspect of it, the branding, the colors, the flavor choices, the design, I wanted it to tell a story. I wanted it to be crystal clear, like you are not just getting any old chocolate that I just thought about like on the limb. It's something that I've been thinking about for a very long time. So uh, with the colors, um, it's a nod actually to, we have a favorite chocolatier um, named Patrick Roger in France. He's a moth, also an MLF. And his color is green and Bruno and I really like that green, but we didn't want to be exactly the same. Uh, we also both really love the water and we kind of like the marbled effect. So that chose the colors. I am from California. I freaking love California. So Codinia is actually the same font as the California license plate. Um, yeah, so that's like incorporation there. Um, for the Wonderless box, because it was during COVID and I was thinking when I was, you know, testing out my audience, uh, some people, they usually like adventurous flavors. Some people just prefer classic flavors. So I wanted to have two separate collections so you could have both. And you didn't have to like get a box and think, ah, oh, but I only want to choose these ones. Um, and since no one could travel, I thought of the Wonderless collection because it gave flavors that I really liked that were kind of more exotic, that kind of came from places that you could travel to, like Yuzu, Sakura, um, Coconut, stuff like that. And then... I came up with the classic box because it's more traditional flavors that have favorites like double sea salt caramel, um, praline, um, coffee, things like that. And I wanted a story and everything. So when I was in San Diego in college, there's a spot called Sunset Cliffs. And whenever I felt like super stressed out, I would literally just drive there and sit and watch the sunset. Like by myself, just <laughs> like all my thoughts and just everything released. And it always calmed me down. And I would always tell myself like, it's going to happen one day and just, you know, just have these types of feelings. And so I wanted that incorporated somehow. So the classic collection is a nod to the sunset at Sunset Cliffs. It's in, it's in the colors of Sunset Cliffs. And then everything else just takes kind of inspiration. So ube, Filipino, obviously. Love our ube. I love ube. So I had to put an ube truffle. And then... Bruno is French. Rocher is a classic French snack. Had to put that in there. And so, yeah, it's just a combination. There's always like a story behind everything. Yeah. That's awesome. Like I, my goodness, the thought process that goes into your chocolate making <laughs> is tremendous. Um, and then you also have the OMG bar. Yes, that's our bestseller to yes. this day. Yeah. <laughs> I will have to tell you, we had to chop it up in little pieces. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sending you some. I'll be sending you some. Yeah. I'll be sending you some after this. No, no, no. I'm ordering stuff. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's just, I mean, just the just the experience of trying your chocolate just feels um it feels like um chocolate to another level. It's not your usual, I don't know, like not even comparable to C's candy. I mean having your chocolate and then going cease, it's like, oh, I, I poo-poo cease now. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't go back. Yeah, once you have quality, you don't go back. Yeah. Like, people don't realize when they when they hear chocolatier, they're like, oh, you make chocolate. Like, okay, cool. 
but it's like no there's a whole level it's like there's a whole world out there that um is slowly becoming more popular with social media yeah. and lots of chocolatiers popping up uh but yeah it's definitely chocolate is a whole experience if you okay. let it be. yeah and if you're if you're exposed to it correctly yeah no i i completely agree <laughs> um so since um since you started your business, what's the one thing you wish you knew before you started? Yeah, I was thinking about this. So uh, I feel like with Codinia Chocolate, when I launched it, I knew there was no going back. I wasn't going to go take a job somewhere else. This was it for me. And um, I'm when I had the Chocolate Lady, I made a lot of mistakes. So I think that a lot of the lessons I learned from the Chocolate Lady, I transferred over to Codinia Chocolate. And one of the biggest things, the biggest struggles was that I always said, and I find so many creatives say is like, you know, when you take a creative hobby and you turn into a passion, I mean, I mean you take a passion, turn into a business, the, it's a completely different ball game. And the business aspect just kind of goes like over your head and you don't know anything about it because you weren't trained for it. You didn't go to school for it, unless maybe you did. Um, so navigating and learning business sides, like meaning like, how do you sell your product? How do you market your product? Because at the end of the day, like if you can't sell what you're making, you're not going to be in business. You're going to be making lovely product, but if no one's buying it, then you don't make a living. So, uh, I took the time that with Kadena Chocolate, we actually invested in a business coach and I wanted to be educated on all of the business things because I knew that was a weak point of mine. I read so many business books, um, listened to all these podcasts and all this stuff, but I was like, I need someone who's really been successful as a business person to guide me and teach me straightforward. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to know and apply it to my business. And that's made all the difference. And so I feel like um, that's something I try to tell people when they say they have a desire to go into business, like not to be scared of it, but try and prepare yourself as much as possible um not just on chocolate wise but you have to know business things you have to be comfortable and ready to to jump into actual business things numbers sales marketing structuring you know bookkeeping everything if you actually want to do this as a business it's a completely different ball game so that, yeah, no, absolutely. I completely agree. <laughs> there's so much to, there's just so much to process. Like you can be so creative, but then the business side just kills you. Like, how do you, as you said, how do you turn your passion into something that? Yeah, you'll... it's just, it's the saddest, it's the saddest thing. When I had um, the chocolate lady, I felt like I was doing really great stuff. I invested so much money into doing certain events or certain things. And in the end, the return was like, <laughs> nothing and it's like I poured my heart into this and there's no return and I couldn't connect like why is that happening you know and it's I didn't know business things I didn't know my audience I didn't know how to reach out to them I didn't know how to communicate to them I didn't know how to build customer relationships correctly um I was just kind of free winging it and thinking like oh I'm going to figure it out as I go but every time I did that and I took my time that way it cost me more money in the end so I knew like okay Codinia Chocolate is not going to play she is mm -mm. We're not doing that this time. We are not doing that this time. No way. I don't know if it's also something about like when you become a mom yeah. and when you're in your 30s, you're like, there's no time for BS. This is <laughs> this is serious. Let's invest in ourselves. And so that's what I told my husband. He's like, okay. And we invested. And yeah, I mean, it's it's it was a lot. I will tell you that um people always say, Oh, I don't have the time. I'm so busy, I have kids and this and this. Everyone has everyone's busy it's what do you prioritize you know how do you um do you really if you really want it, you freaking make the time for it i was up at like 4 a.m every day um to go through all this business stuff before my daughter woke up and then when she went to sleep i was doing that and in between i was doing chocolate so you just make it work and if you really want it, you just make it work so. that's awesome advice and that's i mean that just is it's not just for chocolate but this everything. Is yeah, everything, yeah, everything. Everything. <laughs> totally, totally. So I love, um, so I was, I follow you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I may not like all the time, but I see you go yeah. on my feed. So I've, I've been following. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I absolutely love, absolutely love is how you've been doing the podcast and how mm -hmm. you're doing this mentorship program. Um, and that to me is amazing because um, 
you know, in business or in, in, in general, um, the mindset is sometimes more comp competition and just, you know, getting an upper leg over everyone else. But I think people miss the boat with mentor mentorship, I'm sorry, mentorship <laughs> and, and teaching what, you know, and kind of just molding, you know, the next generation because there's, yeah. yeah. there's not for everyone. So tell me how, you, how that came about. So with the, so when we started Codinia Chocolate, I always uh, spun the idea with Bruno. I said, one day we should teach. We should mm -hmm. definitely discover teaching. I didn't know that we were going to have the type of mentorship program we had, mm -hmm. um, but I just knew that, you know, there's other people who feel what we felt throughout our journey in the last, you know, 10, 15 years, who would greatly benefit from our knowledge and everything. Um, so that's how the mentorship started. I just really, I've always said that I started chocolate, uh, because I wanted to spread chocolate happiness as cheesy as that, ha as that sounds, but it's, it's the honest truth. Like that's really what I, I said. If you're able to do a job that brings you so much joy and it can bring joy to others, then that's the best job in the world, right? Like whatever form that is. So you should go in on that. So, um, for the podcast, I feel like uh, or with Codinia Chocolate in general, I just feel like I reached a point where when it came to business, when it came to kind of like coming into my own and owning my voice, I used to be very self-conscious and I used to hide and I used to not put it out there as much um, because I was like suffering from imposter syndrome. I was afraid of other chefs judging me because like I said, I came from, I have no, I had prior to chocolate, I had no culinary background. I didn't bake. I didn't, I had nothing, I, you know. And all of a sudden I'm trying to like come up and I want to be respected in this industry. I had a lot of insecurity about that. So I just reached a point where I was like, you know what? There's people who probably feel the same way um, right now. And I think that it could help them hear some stories or help them hear that someone who keeps saying like, if you have a dream, you can do it. You know, like I, it's all, I'm always more like motivational content than anything else because I feel like it's always, with your mind and if your mind gets so gun strong on it then you can really truly do anything so that's what started the podcast and then that's kind of what led to the idea of the mentorship program and bruno and i said if we're going to do a program to mentor people we're going to do it unlike anyone else so we do so much in our mentorship program um, we teach aspiring chocolatiers fundamentals to advanced techniques we go into chocolate business we go into mindset we do live classes we do one-on-one um, -on -one sessions. So we really listen to our mentee, like for their specific needs. And we're with you for a minimum three months. So it's not like you took a class with us for a couple of days and all of a sudden it's like, okay, pack up, go home. It's like, no, we want to see you through because it takes time to for your goals and for you to actually experience some sort of growth. And we wanted to invest that time. So that's kind of how the mentorship program got going and how it's been, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. And I can't wait to see more stuff. It's just like, you know, when you do the behind the scenes and all that, it was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. we, had, we just wrapped up a, a class today. A girl from Costa Rica just finished a class with us. It's so crazy. I mean, she was here for a vacation, but she literally just messaged me through Instagram. She's like, I'm going to be in LA. Can I have a mentorship with you? I'm like, yeah, of course. And so it was just great experience. Great experience. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Um, so I know that you guys are going to be, are going to be doing events. Um, you're going to be at the Valley Fest. Yes. On the 28th. Yes. Very excited for that. Um, inaugural Valley Fest, Codinia Chocolate's first public appearance. Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised in the Valley, in Granada Hills. So uh, nice. yeah, I feel like, you know, it's about time to put the Valley on the map. It's been there, but you know, <laughs> We haven't had an event this huge, I don't think. So it's going to be a really good time. August 28th, Westfield, Topanga, 5 to 10 p.m. Hope to see you there. <laughs> <laughs> My ticket. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So apart from that, is there any other events that you're going to be um, at or, um, you know, doing? Uh, yeah. So I am currently in talks with um, Cafe Aficionado, which I know is where your 818 event is. Um, <laughs> And I'm planning to do some pop-ups with them for the fall and the winter. And other than that, we are just focusing on our mentorship program as much as we can, um, keeping up with the holiday season that's about to come because 
a holiday season is always super crazy for chocolate sears and um, yeah that's about that's about what the plate is looking like these days oh my gosh, it's been so crazy i'm excited for your pop-ups at cafe aficionado <laughs> oh, thank you yeah they're like right next to me i'm like oh my gosh i need to be here so yeah no reggie and abby are, are are good people they're phenomenal and what they do is all about community so yeah. to reggie and abby <laughs> sorry kind of got ooh. No, you know. good, good, good. All good. <laughs> so um, where can they find you? Where can they follow you? Um, you know, where can they probably, if anyone's interested in becoming part of the mentorship program, where can yeah. they? Yes, yeah, so you can find us. Our Instagram is at Codinia Chocolate, or at Codinia Chocolate, I'm sorry. Our online chocolate shop is CodiniaChocolate.com and our mentorship um, website that has links to the podcast, the shop, everything is CodiniaChocolateMentorship.com. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, last one, any advice for future chocolatiers or people who, you know, just starting or even thinking about it? Like what's the uh, one advice you would give them? <laughs> the one advice I would give you is, uh, you're in for a wild ride. I mean, chocolate making, cho being a chocolatier is one of the most fun jobs out there. It's not one of the most easiest jobs, but it's one of the most fun jobs out there. And if you are feeling some sort of way like you're called to do this, um, I believe you should 100% do it because happiness is everything. And we need more people doing what they love in the world. I just think it all goes full circle. And you'd be doing a job that you love. And I feel like there's not too many people who can say that. So you're in for a fun, wild ride, and the beginning is very, very exciting. It's very, very terrifying, but just believe that you can do it and have fun. And that's pretty much it. And put in the work, and that's it. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tina, for being on the show. Really oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> Follow her on IG. Um, order some chocolate, because we yeah. <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> Personal experience, I promise. So... <laughs> And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.